Hello, this is Matthias Müll for marmorworld.com and welcome to the third class of our After Effects Expressions course. I named today's class Expressions as a Pocket Calculator, since this is the best way to think about expressions when you want to get started writing your own expressions code. Let's write some expressions to place those dots here. The first thing I do is to right click on the position and choose separate dimensions, such that x and y position are two independent properties. Because then we can apply an expression to only the x or only the y position, such that the expression only needs to describe a single number. Expressions for 2D or 3D position values are slightly more complicated, therefore we will cover them in a later class. Let's place this dot here exactly in the middle of the comp. As usual, we alt-click on the stopwatch to activate expressions for this property. Since our comp is 1920 pixels wide, the middle is at 1920 divided by 2. As you can see, you can simply enter this as an expression, and the layer is placed accordingly. Let's place the second layer 300 pixels left of the center. So we simply enter 1920 divided by 2 minus 300 to create the 300 pixels offset. You can also put parentheses around the 1920 divided by 2 to make clear that the 300 is subtracted after the division is calculated, although this is not necessary here since multiplication and division are always calculated first and then addition and subtraction. This third dot has a keyframed animation. We can disable it temporarily by entering the most simple expression ever, a single number. Let's enter 170 and as you can see the layer is not animating anymore but stays at this value, although the keyframes are still present. By turning the expression on and off using the equality symbol, you can toggle between the expression and the keyframe value. Adding the expression also kind of locks the value, so when we move the layer in the viewer, you can see it only moves left and right, but not up and down anymore. Note that the keyframes are still changed when moving the layer, but the layer does not move up or down because the Y value is controlled by the expression and not by those keyframes. In the next example, we place this plus symbol here in the middle of the two other symbols. The left one has an X position of 500 and the right one of 1500. So the middle is 500 plus 1500 divided by 2, which is 1000. Now instead of hard coding these numbers, we can also pick whip to link the positions of the other layers dynamically. So we select the 500 and then pick whip to the 500 here on the position of the first point. As you can see, the 500 now has been replaced by some code dynamically linking to the position of point 1. The code looks a bit complicated, but it's actually not too hard to read. It says, from this comp, from layer point 1, please use in the transform section the property X position. Now, we also select the 1500 and pick whip it to the position of the second point. To make it a bit more interesting and complicated, for the second point, I didn't separate the dimensions. So it does not have an X position value to link to, but only a position value, including both X and Y. If we try to pick whip to this property, we get an error saying expression result must be of dimension 1 and not 2. Which means that we need to have a single number here, but the position is actually two numbers, namely X and Y. To fix this, we first undo and then select the 1500 again and this time don't link to the entire property, but drag the pick whip directly to only the X value here. Now the generated expressions code looks a little bit different. This zero in square brackets at the end says that we don't want to use the entire position value, but only the first component, namely the X component of it. One thing we need to get used to is that programmers start counting at zero. So zero is the X component and one is the Y component. But we will cover this in more detail in a later class. We can move the two points freely now and due to the expression, the plus symbol always stays in the center. Of course, currently it only stays in the center in X direction. If you need it in both directions, you could of course apply an expression to the Y position in the same way. So far, we learned that expressions are little pocket calculator formulas with the super cool extra feature that you cannot just use fixed numbers in the formulas, but also link to other properties with the pick whip. The code snippets that you create with the pick whip are called variables. And in addition to the variables you can create with the pick whip, there are lots of other predefined variables that you can use. One of the most useful ones is called value. Value gives you the keyframe value at the current time of the property that the expression is applied to. This allows you to let the expression calculate something relative to its keyframe value. Here we've got this keyframe bouncing ball, for example. 
If we enter on the y position the expression value plus 100, you can see that this offsets the motion path by 100 pixels, since at each frame it adds 100 to the keyframe motion path value. If we enter value times 2, you can see that the bounces are now twice as high. Maybe let's combine this with an offset of minus 80, such that it ends up again in the correct height. So, with simple multiplication and addition, you can scale and offset a motion path. And all of this just with the help of the value variable. Another example for a useful variable that you cannot access with a pick whip is this comp dot width. As you might expect, it represents the width of the composition. So, if we enter this comp dot width as expression, the x position becomes 1920, because this is the width of the comp. To center it, we can use this comp dot width divided by 2. Like all built-in expressions variables, this value updates dynamically. So, if we cut and paste the layer to a new composition of a different size, it updates automatically. Okay, so now you know the value variable and the thiscomp.width variable. And there are lots of other ones. But do you have to learn all of them by heart? No, the great thing is that you find all of them in the expressions language menu here at this icon that looks a little bit like a play button. To use this menu, you need to understand that variables have a hierarchical structure. So in the global section, for example, you find this comp, but you don't find this comp dot width. But in the comp section, we find all properties that a composition has. Here you also find width. The different parts of a variable name are always connected with a dot. So you know that with this comp dot width, you can access the width of the current composition. If you want to know the width of any other composition, in the global section you can see that you also can get comps by name. So with comp and then in parentheses the name of the composition, you can access any comp in your project. Actually, you can also get such a comp with a pick whip by pick whipping to a comp in the project panel. As you can see, that created exactly what we've just found in the expressions menu. Comp and in parentheses the name of the composition. Note that those names always must be put in quotes. So to access the width of the other comp, we now can add dot width. Let's do one more practical example. Let's say this text should always stay right of the dot, even if we replace the dot with a bigger or smaller image. So we could say, please use as my x position, my keyframe value, plus the width of the dot layer. So as expression, we type value to get the keyframe position, and then plus, and now we need to get the width of the dot layer. So we use a pick whip and drag it onto this layer, which gives us this comp dot layer dot. Now we need to find the width of the layer. So in the expressions menu, we look in the layer category what properties all layers have. In the general section, you find width. So we know that with dot width, we can access the width of this layer. Now the text jumped to the right of the dot. If we replace the footage of the dot layer with this arrow here, as you can see, the text moves to adjust to the new size. Summary. Today you learned that expressions are like a pocket calculator. That you can enter formulas and that in those formulas you can access almost everything in your project using variables. Those variables have a hierarchical structure. So you have, for example, variables for each com, for each layer, and by connecting everything with dots you can dive into those variables and can access any properties like the width of the comp or layer, for example. Finally, the PickWhip is a tool to generate variables for properties quickly without the need to type everything manually. And it can not only be used to link to properties, but also to link to layers, comps or other project items. Next week, we look at a very practical example and use everything you've learned today to let the wheels of a car rotate fully automatically. Again, this is Matthias Müll for marmoworld.com. See you next time.